the previous episode of Travel Shorts Hong Kong, I came to Macau on the Turbojet Ferry. Toured around the old town visiting Senado Square, the ruins of St. Paul and Monte Fort, before catching a bus over to the Koh Tai Strip, which is where I am now. So I hope you enjoy this episode of me exploring the Koh Tai Strip in Macau. So, first things first, I'm going to walk through the MGM. Once I do that, whatever hotel I come to first, probably the London, I'll walk through that. I think they've got a double-decker bus, and the walkway is themed to the London Underground. That'd be quite interesting, but I believe it's a bit wider than the London Underground one. Then we've got the Parisian, the Venetian, and also Studio City. So, the plan is... In the Venetian, I've got tickets to Team Lab Supernature. If you're not familiar what Team Labs is, they're really big in Japan and it's a light art exhibition. So they use light and touch and everything like that. It looks really cool. Uh, when I was originally planning to go to Tokyo, which never happened in the end, that was high on my bucket list of things to do when I was there. So I've got tickets to Team Lab Supernature. Tickets I booked via Clue, the sponsor of today's video. Like I mentioned earlier, if you see the go in the description below, there'll be a direct link to the same ticket that I've got. So if you click on that, then use my special promo code Travel Shorts, you'll get 5% off not just that ticket, but any booking you make on uh, the Clue website. So that includes attractions, tours, hotels, etc. So it looks like we're going to the Parisian first. And if that's the case, I've got tickets to go right to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Not the real Eiffel Tower, the fake Eiffel Tower in Macau. And again, I got those tickets via Kluke and Kluke are the sponsors of today's video. So thanks again, Kluke. And um, they have offered my viewers and subscribers 5% of any tickets that, that they purchase via my link down below in the description. And if you use my special promo code Travel Shorts, you get 5% off any purchase on the Kluke website. So I hi highly recommend them. I've been using them for all my tours around on this Hong Kong trip. Everything's been super easy. You can even make purchases and keep your tickets on the app, the Kluke app. That's what I'm doing. I've just stored them all on the Kluke app and you show them the QR code everywhere I go. And I go straight in. And usually a lot of places, especially in Hong Kong, have special VIP Kluke lanes. So you can just jump the queue and go straight to the front, show your Kluke pass, and then that's it. You're straight onto the attraction or the ride, tour, anything like that. Let's just try and walk straight through here, shall we, and get to the Parisian. So I guess I want to just get to ground level and double back on myself and go that way. Quite an impressive foyer though. Back there, I might see if I can just walk all the way through this casino rather than walking outside in the heat. At least there'd be air conditioning in here. I'm assuming if I just keep walking down that way, I come to another exit on the other side of the building. Well, hopefully in theory, if I walk through the building, I'll come to the other side. I don't know what that car's meant to be, but it looks like a cross between a banana and an omelette. Oh my god, it's a real car as well. Oh my god, that's a Porsche. What kind of person would want to buy that? It must be a limited edition, because nobody in their right mind would be driving an omelette car. No, look at that, the seats are ridiculous. Okay, it's called a fat convertible. Chassis of a real Porsche, polyurethane plaster on a pocket resin. Oh, it must be a bit of an art exhibit. It was made from 1954, unless the, that's the date of birth for the artist, Erwin Wurm. Okay, at least it's not a real car you can get, because you'd have to be insane to want to drive that down the road. You can see there, that's the casino area, so you can't film at all in the casinos, in any of the casinos here, which is fair enough. People don't want to see you gambling. Okay, we've got a McDonald's up there. Not that hungry yet, though. I reckon if I... I'll have a look what's just outside here. Okay, I've lost my bearings a bit being in there. I was expecting to see the MGM on my left hand side, but it's not there. So I'm just going to walk outside and just see exactly whereby I am. If I get to the end of the building here and look up, I should be able to see some recognisable buildings. Hopefully, that's the plan anyway. Ah, hold on. London is by there. Well, London are quarters anyway. You see an Eiffel Tower anywhere? That's what I'm looking for, I think. Maybe I should just walk into the Londoner. It's quite difficult getting GPS signal on my Google Maps as well here because the buildings are so high. It is working a little bit. It's not very good. See, it's also difficult to cross the roads everywhere because there's no walking anywhere on the road. But I'm going to go across there and have a look at the Londoner. 
Oh, actually, that direction might be Parrot. Hold on, flip you around. I think that building over there is Paris. Again, I could be mistaken, but if we just keep walking this way, we're definitely gonna get somewhere. And once I'm from underneath this area, I should be able to get a proper connection on my GPS. Right, I'm gonna cross the road here. There's a pedestrian crossing, go over there into the sunlight, but I should be able to see some things a bit clearer. Do you reckon I asked the gardener over there to squirt me with that hose pipe? Really do with it being cooled down. I think the next hotel I go into, I'm gonna find a cafe and get myself another drink. This heat is really taken out of me. It's <laughs> wow. Okay, there's the Venetian ahead of me, you can see there. So we're here now, we're gonna to go to the Venetian first. Okay, I know I keep changing my mind where I'm gonna go first, but I can see the Venetian. So I'm gonna go into the Venetian. I'm gonna get myself a drink, and then I'm gonna to go to Team Lab Super Nature there. When I finished in the Venetian, after a good old walk around, then I will go to Paris. So well, there's Londoner there, you can see Big Ben in the distance. Then I'm gonna to go to Paris, go to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Then I've got tickets for Studio City Hotel. That's got the highest figure of eight Ferris wheel in the world. So that's gonna be interesting. I think that's it for all the tickets for Macau. All those tickets, like I've been talking about this whole episode, were purchased through Kluk. All the descriptions of all the tickets that I purchased, so the ferry terminal, the, the ferry cruises with Turbojet, the Team Lab yeah, Macau in Venetian, the figure of eight Ferris wheel at Studio City, and the Eiffel Tower, all gonna be in the description below with links you can click through. Using my promo code as well when you come to check out is Travel Shorts, and that'll give you 5% discount on all those tickets. Thanks again to Kluke for sponsoring today's video. It's really appreciated, and thanks to them, we're offer, able to offer 5% discount to all you guys watching as well. So I really appreciate what they're doing for this video in today's episode. You can see the Eiffel Tower in the distance. So that's the Parisian over there. You've got the Londoner here with the Big Ben. And you've got the Venetian here. Okay, let's cross the road and head to the Venetian. Great, it's on green. Let's keep going. Not sure how long it lasts. So it'd be interesting to see just how similar this Venetian hotel and casino is compared with the one in Vegas. So I have been to the one in Vegas a, a long, long time. In fact, oh God, it's 20 years ago it would have been. In 2003, I went to that one. And I actually stayed in the Venetian for a few nights on a road trip around that side. So the west coast of America. It looks like they've drained the lake or it's down for maintenance at the moment. So no doubt there's probably usually a fountain show here. Seems like everywhere does fountain shows. You've got the bell tower there, same as the one in Vegas. And if you're interested in the real bell tower in Venice, check my <laughs> channel. I was in Venice last year with my two kids on our epic European adventure where we traveled for 11 countries over 22 days just using trains. And we went right to the top of that Campanile or the bell tower in St. Mark's Square in Venice. I might even put the link in the description to that video down below if you're interested in the real Venice, not just the fake Venice, like here in Vegas. But I'll tell you what, let's go inside the hotel, get some air conditioning, or I'll come out for a proper look later when I'm going over to the Parisian and the Londoner. For now, I just want to get in the air con and get myself a drink. Oh, that looks very similar to the Vegas Venetian, I'm sure. There's something like this in that one. Okay, so I want to go up to level three because that's where team labs are and the shops and hopefully somewhere to get a drink. Don't know why people are just waiting for that lift and getting crowded in when the escalator is right next door to it. This is like the one in Vegas. You've got the fake canal there. You've got the fake sky above you. Just like Vegas. Shopping area of the casino is a lot busier than the winds. So this is the Grand Canal. Now you'd expect somewhere along here to have a drink. 
but they've got to be restaurants. At the moment, I've only seen shops, but they've got to be some cafes, restaurants, places to get a drink. And then you can sit down and just watch the gondolas go past on the Grand Canal. Lego shop there. Our Lord Stowe's. So this is where I wanted to get an egg tart from. Cool. And there's the queue for the egg tarts. Okay, maybe I won't get an egg tart from there at the moment. Let's have a look how long this queue is, shall we? Okay, so the queue is to there for the egg tarts. Yeah, I'm not going to do that at the moment. Maybe once I finish Team Labs. So let's keep looking for somewhere else to grab a drink. Oh, that looks a bit fake. Cause they're actually motorized. He's not doing anything apart from wiggling the oar around. But he's not pushing it to go. Uh, I might just go and get a drink from McDonald's. Not ideal getting a McDonald's, but a drink's a drink. I might even get a McFlurry, actually. A drink and a McFlurry. So I've just got myself a Mc Oreo McFlurry and a fresh lemon Coke. Not sure what that is. Well, I know it's Coke, but I'm not sure what type of Coke. And just these two came to $66, which is about seven pounds. Ooh, didn't even have a look how much the real McDonald's food gonna cost. Anyway, I'm gonna drink that and eat this really quickly. Then I'm gonna go to Team Labs. I think it just tastes like normal Coke. Probably just normal Coke with a slice of lemon in it. I'm just a standard McFlurry. It's the same the world over. Right, I feel a lot better after that drink and ice cream. Let's go and find Team Labs. Okay, so there's a map here. Let's see. Get it in English. And um, I am here. What's going on? So I want to go to Team Lab Super Nature Macau. Locate. Ah, here we go. So, okay, I'm there. I've got to go straight up, turn left, go down to the lower level. There. Okay. And then I've got to head that way. So, lower level that way okay i think i know let's check it out so it looks like i'm going that way turn left by there oh i can make make it bigger as well didn't realize that and move it around that's pretty handy okay two level three let's give that a go i'm not very confident now okay let's see if i remember those directions so straight up turn left Go down a level to level three, the lower level of level three. I can't believe it's 10 past four already. Like the day's running away, it really is. No, we're not near the left-hand turn to go down the stairs. About a month ago, me and my two kids, Matthew and Holly, went to Legoland in Billund in Denmark. And then next door to Legoland, there was a place called Lalandia. And that reminds me of this place as well. The land here is an indoor kind of, I wouldn't say theme park, but a kind of an entertainment centre which is indoors and it has fake sky, like this place. No canals, but just these fake skies. And also, it does remind me a little bit of the Trafford Centre in Manchester. That again has a fake sky on the roof while on the ceiling. Still haven't got to that section like you turn left to go down the floor. I can see how it's quite easy to get lost in this place. Everything looks the same. You're not sure where you're going. Ah, here we go, there's a sign. So here's a sign saying Team Lab Supernature up in that direction there. So I don't know if that machine was wrong because that's not going down, that's just going this direction. So it looks like the map screen was wrong because I'm not going down a section. In fact, I'm just walking straight down here to go to Team Lab Supernature. Hopefully these signs should be correct. I'd imagine by the time I finish in here and after going around Team Labs and I go outside for the next hotels, it's going to be dark outside because it's now quarter past four. I would imagine it's going to take at least an hour in Team Labs. Be quarter past five, maybe even half past five before I leave. 
remember that later so I can get to the Parisian and the London are going that direction so I don't have to go back outside the way I came. I do have to admit though, the shops in the shopping mall here at the Venetian aren't quite as high end as the ones in the Wynn. They're more affordable, shall we say. Even I can shop in some of these places. Okay, Team Lab Super Nature to the left. This hotel and casino and shopping mall is huge. I've been walking for ages, I'm still not even there yet. They're almost like mini cities into themselves. A bit like the Vegas one, you can walk around the Vegas hotels for ages and ages and not even find the exit. Well, if we're coming in this direction, maybe the Team Labs has taken over one of the convention buildings. Now imagine all these areas here are for conventions and exhibitions. I don't work just walking around all these places. The sign saying the Parisian is this way as well, so maybe when I come out of Team Labs, I'll head straight to the Parisian, then cross the road, go to the Londoner, then find Studio City, which is in this area somewhere, to go on that figure of eight Ferris wheel. And that's probably going to end my day. Oh no, I need, still need to go back to the Wynn uh, Palace and go on that cable car. Oh, it's the Parisian is up there. So when I leave, that's the way I'm going to go. And Team Labs is right ahead of me here. Thank you. Okay, let's see what this is all about, shall we? Okay. Well, that's just a mirror there. I thought that was somebody walking towards me, but it's me. There I am. Hello. So I think I'm going to walk around first and then take some photographs after. It's a bit difficult filming and trying to take photographs at the same time. So all this side is a mirror and these are all the light projected onto screens everywhere. Team Lab Super Nature. What an oppressive art installation this is. Like, there's so much light, so much movement. It's absolutely amazing. Like even the floor, it just looks like it's moving under your feet. And there's mirrors everywhere. It's given that illusion of a huge open space with all the reflection bouncing from one mirror to the other. Wow, this is really, really impressive. Really impressive. See, you feel like you could just keep walking, but there's just a mirror by here. Look how bright this room is. It's absolutely amazing. This room's only small, but you've got all this stuff here with mirrors to the side of you, so it looks like an infinity all the way down. It's really impressive. So all this is just projected up onto a standard wall. Amazing. Looks like you can go up there as well. There's a walkway up there. Whoa. Look at these. Whoa. It's a room filled with huge balloons. Oh, 
Where am I? There I am. <laughs> so this room is just full of these huge balls. They're quite soft. They're like big beach balls. And it just keeps changing colour. And you've got to fight your way through. And push them up quite high. Like, whoa. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this room now. I've had enough fun. Let's find somewhere else to go, shall we? Now, I think the exit's in this direction, so I've just got to fight my way through to get there. I think I can see the exit in front of me here. Either that, oh no. Yes, here's the exit. Or is it just a mirror? Oh no, it's just mirrors. <sighs> Hello there. Hi. Okay, one thing I've just found out, even when you come in, there's three additional art installation spaces. That's an additional charge of $100. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. Uh, so I just asked if I could purchase it now, just to go in the three other rooms. But they said, once I'm inside, I can't go back out, purchase the ticket and come back in again. So there's no chance of going into those three additional rooms. I'm not sure what they are. Well, this one is a tea house. I, so I don't know what the other two are, but I'm not going to find out because apparently you can't leave, buy the additional tickets and come back in again. Oh, that's a shame because I wanted to explore everything there is to see here. And because I booked my tickets in advance, I just walked straight through and just showed the QR code. And I didn't see any signs outside saying additional tickets available for things. So I don't think that's advertised very well, if I'm honest. But I had a look on the website before I came to see what was here, and I didn't see any upcharges for anything. That's a little bit disappointing, if I'm honest. But I would like to see everything that this place has to offer. Oh, I'm back in the ball's room. Don't want to go in there. I've already been in there. I'm starting to get a little bit lost. Okay, this is a view of the whole exhibition down below. See what's in here. I think I know what it is. Wow. I think I can stay here for <laughs> quite a while. This is amazing. believe this this is absolutely amazing
Wow. And this is it. What a light show this is. Go out of this room, find somewhere else. Gotta be careful where I'm walking. Don't want to walk into a mirror for all the installation itself. Sure, this is the way out. Yeah, it's way out. Back into this main hub room. Okay, I think I might be calling it a day here at Team Labs. I think I've, well, I think I've seen everything. I'm still not 100% sure. I'm just gonna go for one last walk around and see if there's anything that I've missed. So you look in here. Oh, there's this, another entrance into the LED room. So I've been in there already. So that's just, it must be two ways into the LED room. I'm going to walk around all the outskirts to see if there's any more rooms hidden somewhere. Like this, for example. So I've had a look. No entry. Okay. So that was a no entry, so that's the exit probably to one of the paid uh, attractions in here. Uh, now I know I've been in there, I think, but I'll go there again. Oh, that's upstairs. So I've been upstairs. Okay, that's a paid area, so I can't go in there. That's the other paid area, so I know I can't go in there. So let's continue walking. But I do think I've now seen everything. Let's double check in here. Ah, oh, yeah. The big balls room. Been in there. Here's an area I haven't been to. Up this steep little hill. Oh, I think this is a room you can draw something. And they scan it in and then it runs along the walls. You guys are about to see how great my art skills are. So I think I'm gonna draw a, I don't know, do something simple like a frog. And broke the crayon straight away. Oh, this is difficult to do while holding the camera. Hold on a sec. Here we go, an absolute masterpiece. Shall we see that on the wall? They're probably too embarrassed to put it on there. I'm embarrassed to show you guys. I'm only five years old. That's terrible. <laughs> My children draw better than that. <laughs> okay, so let's get scanned in there. Okay. And let's see where it appears. I think that needs to go in the bin. I can't see where it is. I think it's probably too embarrassed to show its face. Can't see it at all. I think it's gone home. Some creatures on the floor. Uh, I think I'm going to leave this room now. I haven't seen my frog anywhere. I think he's just too embarrassed to show his face because that was an awful drawing. My kids, when they were younger, probably at the age of two, could draw better than that. Not where my skills lie. I have no skills. What do I do? Just walk across. So it looks like you walk across this onto the spot.
Oh, it sounds like he's making a tune as well. So you can move all this area here with your hands. You don't have to even touch the wall if it's motion, probably from the lights up there. Let's keep exploring while we go in this room. Okay, so this is for a kid's room. So for guests three to 15, not quite in that age bracket. So they must go in there and all these must be motion sensors, I guess, to move around. Okay. Dinosaurs made out of flowers of light. Okay, that's the way I went up that area. Let's we'll see what's through this door here. Light sculpture plane. Wow. Okay, out of here. I think I must be coming to the end now. So that's where I went up. Done that way, done that way. I wonder if these are motion sensors as well. No, they're not motion sensors. It's quite easy to get lost in here. Okay, I think I'm back in the original hub area again, which means I've probably done everything. Still not 100% sure if I have. I'll look around a little bit longer. But I guess I'm gonna have to start getting a move on as well. It's getting late. It is now five to six. Oh, this is no entry. I think actually I'm gonna call it a day here at Team Lab. I've had quite a lot of fun here, to be honest. It's it's a really entertaining place. What's in there? Oh, the LED strip light things. It's just a shame about those additional rooms that they don't really tell you about until you're in here. Because I walked past the, where the ticket booth on the outside and there was no mention of additional, well, at least I didn't notice any additional costs for doing things. Okay, so it looks like the exit is this way. Ticket. Ticket. It's, okay, so they scan your ticket on the way out as well. So I guess that's to always know the numbers inside, maybe. Because I think there's a limit of how many people that can be in there in one time, which is a good thing. That shows that it's not overcrowded. Oh, you can rent shoes as well. Exit this way. Lockers here, if you've got some oversized bags. I've only got my little satchel, so I don't need that. So if you do come with a big rucksack, you can put it in the lockers provided there. What's over here? So there's some candles. Okay, so it looks like you make your own candles and buy them for 80 patakas. You want to do that? And that's it. We're out. So the plan is, it's bright out here now. So the plan is, is to head towards the Parisian. I'm going to go straight to the top of the Eiffel Tower. I said fake Eiffel Tower, not the real Eiffel Tower. And then go to Studio City to do the Ferris wheel. And then from there, I'll have to have a look around the Londoner because it is the UK, obviously. So that's it. End of Team Labs. Very enjoyable. I see I'm looking here to see if it says about those upselling for tickets. It's in very small text. So this is on the way in, so there's the entry there. It tells you the opening time. Please have your ticket ready. And then look how small writing that is there. You know, tea house to experience the floating flower garden, massless clouds and um, tea house. Please purchase add on ticket before admission in addition to your general admission ticket. Look at that, it's so easy to miss when you're going in. I don't think anybody's gonna spot that. Anyway, time to leave and head for the Parisian.
So the decor has now changed from Italian to French. Although it does look remarkably the same. Looks like this is a food court area. I might have a look and see if I can get my dinner from here before I go up the Eiffel Tower. See if there's anything that takes my fancy. I think I'm going to go for the beef donburi. So this is what I've gone for. It's the beef donburi. So it looks like it's got some beef fried egg on a bed of rice and a Sprite for a drink. And this came to 90 Macan katakas. So 90 Hong Kong dollars I paid with. Uh, so that's about £9.50 coming up to £10. Hopefully it looks nice, so hopefully it should taste great. Well, let's have a drink first. I'm really thirsty still. I think there's a running theme on this trip. I'm thirsty everywhere I go. Let's try some of this, shall we? I'll tell you what. I think I'm supposed to break the egg before I start eating it, so I guess that just gets mixed in. So let's mix the egg everywhere. And then let's try some of this beef. Hmm. It's thin slices of the beef with egg on top. <laughs> anyway, I'm not going to film this. I'm going to eat this as quick as I can, then head over to the Eiffel Tower. So see you in a minute. I say this looks more Italian than French to be honest Eiffel Tower this way okay we're here at the Eiffel Tower let's go to the entrance and just like all the other attractions in this video the ticket for the Eiffel Tower I booked via the Kluke website I'll leave a link to it in the description below you have the ticket directly on your phone via the Kluke app it's really simple you just go there they'll scan the barcode and hopefully I should go right to the top of the Eiffel Tower Thanks again for Kluke for sponsoring this video today. It's really appreciated. And anybody that clicks through the links down below and uses our special promo code of Travel Shorts will get 5% off their purchase on the Kluke website. Okay, so there is the Eiffel Tower. And I'm going to go right to the top up there. Okay, so I just showed my barcode at the front desk and they gave me this loading ticket which enables me to go right to the top. So let's go there now, shall we? So this gets me to the level 7 and level 37 observation desks. So I'm going to assume that 37 is the very top and probably about there is level 7 maybe. A bit like the real Eiffel Tower, it's got two stages that you can go up to. And it's always difficult, especially in the summer, to book a ticket if you don't do it well in advance. Last year when we were in Paris on our epic European adventure, we weren't able to get any tickets to the Eiffel Tower because we left it way too late. Ah, okay, so here it is, and we're a sight. Oh, and that's good to know. Studio City, where I'm going next, is right next door. So I'm going up to the top by there and that's where the Ferris wheel should be. Anyway, first we're here, Dipole Tower. We've got to go to the top. Private trip all the way to the top of the Eiffel Tower. That doesn't happen in France. It's always ram-packed in the elevators going up. Yes, there are the uh, Palace of Versailles Gardens. With a swim pool over there, looks quite nice. Here we go, right at the top. Okay. 
So I made it to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Might not be the real Eiffel Tower, but it's still got a pretty good view of Macau down below. That's quite impressive there. LED lights on that building there make it look like a water fountain. There we got the Parisian there. Got Studio City over by there, where I'm going next. Uh, down below, that must have been the walkway I came along to get to the Eiffel Tower. So let's have a look at what we've got the other side, shall we? So this is the way I probably walked, that way over there. So there's the Londoner. I think you get there, yeah, I can see Big Ben there. And the House of the Parliament coming all the way along there. And the walkway over there is the one I was mentioning, is shaped like the London Underground, I believe. So I came from that direction, so the wind is probably all the way over there. To be honest, looking at the time, I might not have a chance to go back to the wind to go on the uh, cable cars, which would be a shame. But we'll see how it goes after we go to Studio City. So this is level 37. It's the upper observation level here on the Eiffel Tower, so I can't go any higher. I guess the staff could go higher. I reckon there's probably still something up there. So I got on at level seven, so that's the lower observation area. So you must need a ticket just to go down there. Maybe that's a cheaper ticket to go there and then straight to the top. Altogether, I think I only paid maybe about six pound on Kluke for this, which I think is pretty good value. A lot more expensive to go on the real Eiffel Tower. But then again, that's the real Eiffel Tower, so it would be more expensive. So I think I've seen it all now from top here. It's a great view everywhere, to be honest. And for the money, I, I would recommend coming up here. It's only a five minute activity. You're not going to spend a lot of time up here. But for five minutes, you get to see the view. A little bit of a nice breeze as well. I think it's time to go down and head towards Studio City and go on the figure of eight Ferris wheel. Okay, there's also a hole on the floor that you place your camera on and you can take pictures. And I'll insert that photograph I've just taken now. Looks like I've got the private lift again to myself. So there's the Parisian. I'm just going to walk that way to Studio City. So the time is now, wow, 10 to 7. So my ferry is just in over two hours time and I'm going to need at least half an hour to get there and, and check in, I guess, and go through customs. I think I'm going to have to leave here in about an hour's time. So that means I definitely don't have enough time to go back to the wind to go on the cable car. And that's a real shame. That was one of my bucket list items again that I wanted to do while I was here. But again, plans change. Okay, so I'm on the seventh floor. I should probably hear. Oh, well, there's an easy way just to get out by here without having to go through the hotel. Let's have a look down below. What I want to do is get to over by there. Yeah, even the seventh floor is pretty high. I think I'm going to have to go back into the hotel, go down in a lift somehow. And there's the Eiffel Tower from below. Okay, bye bye Eiffel Tower. Probably the next one I see will be in France at some point. Because I doubt I'm going to be in Macau anytime soon again. So looking down is a walkway down by there. So hopefully I could be able to go straight down here, out that way. That must be the lobby down below us and then straight to Studio City by there. So the man himself, Gustav Eiffel, who was the architect and engineer behind the original Eiffel Tower and where the tower gets its name from. Right, let's keep going down, shall we? Hopefully all these steps will be going down right to where I want to be. There it is, the world's tallest figure of eight Ferris wheel, and I'm about to go on it. Uh, 
So there's a super fun zone over there, but I don't think I'm going to have enough time to go to the super fun zone. So the golden reel is this way. So again, just like all the other attractions here in Macau today, I got my ticket for this Ferris wheel from Kluke. Literally, I've just self-scanned my QR code at the entrance gate there and walked straight in. Looks like I'm taking the elevator to the 23rd floor. many people in the line so I'm hoping they put single groups into each pod. If that's the case I'll have one to myself. Oh, what about 12 people in the line and they go about every 30 seconds the pods get spilled so they could easily do it one per group. So I've got to keep my fingers crossed and go all to myself. I don't understand the duck references in all of these though. And I don't understand why they're not loading all of them either. So they're letting two empty ones go per person. So I'm not sure why they're doing that. Unless nobody's allowed in the duck ones. Maybe you have to pay extra for the duck ones and if you've got your kids with you. I don't understand why they're not letting people go in them. Even now, there's, there's plenty of room. They still don't do it as a private cabin. I don't know why not. There's literally about four more people in the queue behind me. So it's easier to do the private or a video now. Okay, I'm up to the Ferris wheel. You get quite a good view from the top, but I do have a bit of a criticism. Is when there's nobody in the line, there's no need to pack people into the same capsule. So I was in there, and then they also brought in a family with a couple of small kids, which I'm sure they didn't want to be in a capsule with me, and I would have rather been in a capsule by myself, because there was only four more people in the line behind. That would have just filled up the next one, and there would have been nobody going after that. So... Fair enough, if there was lots of people in the line, yeah, fill the capsule up. But when there's nobody in the line, just let people go in by themselves, because it was really awkward, because I couldn't really film in there too much. Because obviously, I don't want a video of people with little kids in there, so it was two parents and two small children. And that just made it a bit awkward. I couldn't do my usual stuff talking to camera. I couldn't really film that much. And um, it's strange, if every other one was a duck pod, which they wouldn't let anybody go into those. So you must have to pay extra to have a rubber duck in with you. And then some doors on some capsules weren't even open either. So I don't know. It, well, it only costs, I think it was just over five pounds for Clute. So it didn't really, doesn't really cost much to do it. And you do get a good view, especially at night time. But I don't know, staff could be a bit more, I don't know. I don't want to sound like I'm criticising it, but when there's options to let people just have a capsule for family, I think it makes everybody a lot happier. Anyway, it's actually getting quite late now. It's um, past quarter to eight. 
my ferry is in <laughs> less than an hour and 15 minutes. It's going to be departing at nine. So I'm going to try and find the shuttle bus here at the Studio City that takes me to the outer ferry terminal. I reckon it's going to take quite a bit of time to, well, not quite a bit. It's going to take some time to go through passport control and board the ferry. So I'm going to leave now. Looks like I'm not going to get to go the cable cars in the wind. That's unfortunate. So the shuttle lobby, it says, is this way. And also the power bank that I brought with me today is now depleted. So I might run out of charge on this camera. It's got 14% left. I've run out of charge on my wireless microphone, which I use to try and make the audio a lot better when I'm connected to this camera. My phone has got... How many percents? 32%. And there's no charging points on the ferries. So I'm going to conserve my battery power. I've got my GoPro in the, in the bag, so that's not going to be too bad. But in low light, GoPros are useless. That's why I'm using this, the DJI Pocket 3. The low light's really good in that, and it's also because it's got an inbuilt gimbal. Hopefully all this footage is really stable. Probably the audio is not good, as good as it was earlier though now, because I haven't got the wireless microphone. Oh. It'll probably take me about 20 minutes to find the shuttle buses as well. Okay, I'm in the shuttle lobby. Hopefully I can find which bus I need to go on to the outer ferry terminal. There's actually two ferry terminals here in Macau. Typer, which will be the closest one, and the outer ferry terminal, which is the one I want. And I can guarantee you that that, boat, that bus that's leaving now is probably to the outer ferry terminal. So this is the one that I want. Every 20 to 35 minutes, so potentially I'm here for another half an hour. So I've just double-checked the schedule. Uh, there's one due to depart at 8 o'clock. It's now 7.53, so if I've read the schedule correctly, we should be departing in less than seven minutes. Excellent. Fingers crossed that's correct. And now I'm down to less than 10% on this battery. So I've made it onto the bus. It's exactly eight o'clock. Hopefully if this sets off soon, I should be there maybe 8.20, 8.25. That should give me enough time to go through passport control and board the ferry. <laughs> I think today's been really good. It's been really tiring. I've done a lot of walking. So far, I've done 29,178 steps, according to my watch. Well, I've still got quite a few to go once I get to Hong Kong. Uh, oh, the more people that want to get on. So once I get to Hong Kong, I'm going to be walking back to the hotel from the start ferry. That's another couple of thousand steps, at least. But I'm on this bus now. Hopefully, I'm going to get. Okay, we've been stopped. There are another hotel for about five minutes. It's only ten past eight, so we got here for five past eight. I'm not sure what hotel it is, but now the driver's gone and walked off somewhere. Hopefully, he's going to be back pretty quick. And here we are at the Wind Palace with the cable car that I didn't get to go on. Oh, look at the queue to get on them though. That's a huge queue. I wonder what the difference is getting on them there and getting on them inside the hotel. Okay, I'm filming on my phone because the battery's run out on my camera. It's after half past eight. I've got less than half an hour to get on the on the ferry. It departs in about 26 minutes. It's still quite a long walk to get to the ferry terminal. Then I've got to find the ferry. So I don't think I'm going to be filming for a while. I've got to be walking briskly. And at the moment, my feet are in agony. So I'll see you on the ferry. Fingers crossed, otherwise I'll have to be standby on a later one. Remembered, I've also got this camera in my bag, so I'll film with this for the rest of the trip. So you can see these walkways, I'm sure it's at least a mile, feels like anyway, to get to the ferry terminal. And it's so difficult walking with these blisters on my feet. I'll show you what the corridor looks like. You know, it's a long tunnel, same one I went on this morning. 
Okay, I've made it to the departure hall. The departure is this way, 2F. So second floor. So I've made it to the line at least. Quit. 22.9 now. So I'm on gate nine, this way. So I've made it with 10 minutes to spare. Thank you. you. Thank you. Can I have a window seat, please? Seat. Yes. Thank you. So I made it on board in good time. I'm pretty tired now, so I think I'm going to try and go to sleep a little bit on my journey home. So just to look at the seats again, got a tray table here, clear on the side. Place to put your magazines. That's about it. Decent That's amount of leg room. There's a life jacket under the seat there. Oh, this is what the seat can apply. And then I've got a view out the window here that you see the sands in the distance then. So again, the yeah. pretty opaque with glasses. You know, not the best view. But I'm not going to be like another view, I'm going to be going to sleep. I don't think this is going to come out clearly. The window's too dirty and the light's reflecting, but we departed the ferry terminal. Another hour, we'll be back in Hong Kong. I made it back to Hong Kong. I'm just gonna catch the MTR under the water to Sim Sha Shui, then walk to the hotel. I was planning originally to do the Star Ferry across the water, but my feet are in too much and it's a bit of a walk for Star Ferry Terminal. So let's find the MTR. I start his steps here. I'm back at the hotel, I've freshened up a little bit, I've had a shower and I'm ready for bed because I'm really tired. My original plan to come back to the hotel from Hong Kong Island was to catch the Star Ferry across the water, but that would have involved a bit more walking than I really want to do at the moment. So I decided to take the MTR from the ferry terminal to Central, then Central over to Sim Sha Shui. The reason I didn't want to walk too much is because my feet are absolutely killing me. I've got two blisters on my little toes. Well, they were blisters, they've now popped and it's just red raw skin that is rubbing against my shoes and they're really painful. And that means tomorrow's plan of going to Lama Island is off, I think. I'll see what I'm like in the morning, but I don't think I'm going to be able to go. Basically, I wanted to go to Lama Island so I could hike across the island from one side to the other, get a nice fish dinner <laughs> in one of the traditional restaurants because it's a fishing village, and then come back to Hong Kong. But I don't think I can climb <laughs> and hike across an island at the moment. Lama Island is one of those outlying islands in the uh, local area. So I would have taken another ferry to get there, but don't think that's gonna happen now. So change of plan. I think I'm just gonna go around Hong Kong, around Kowloon, using the MTR to try and do as little as walking as possible, visiting a number of the smaller sites that I've had on my list that I wanted to go to and might not have been able to. So tomorrow's episode is gonna be 
searching for all these small little hidden attractions everywhere around the area. Uh, it should actually hopefully be pretty exciting. Anyway, if you made it as far in the video, thank you so much for watching. It's really appreciated. If you're new here, my name is Mark and I make travel and theme park videos from around the world. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen today, please think about liking, subscribing and hitting that notification bell button. Thanks for watching. Bye. Next time on Travel Shorts Hong Kong.